Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice Diophantine system. Yes, A, B and C are integers and we're going to be solving for A, B, C. Alright, so this is a Diophantine system and we're looking for integer solutions. So how do we solve such a system? Obviously we have two equations but three variables. If we were solving for real numbers, you could just you know, fix one of these variables and then you would find infinitely many solutions for the system. That's why we're looking for integer solutions. Now as is, obviously you can go ahead and look for two numbers whose sum of squares is equal to 45 at the same time satisfying the second equation. But there's actually a better way, in my opinion, an easier way to do it, and that will be to get rid of one of the variables. But not only that, you'll see that gives us an extra thing. So let's go ahead and subtract these two equations. So in other words, we have a squared plus b squared equals 45. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by negative 1 in the second equation. That's going to give me negative b squared minus c squared equals negative 40. And then I'll be adding these two equations. b squared cancels out. I end up with a squared minus c squared. And that gives me 5. And this is what is nice about the system. When you subtract, you not only get rid of one of the variables, but you also get a difference of squares as opposed to a sum of squares, which is factorable. That's nice. Obviously, 45 and 40 are not very large numbers, but think about generalizing, generalizing this to larger numbers, then you would probably want to subtract. Because looking for two numbers, suppose we're looking for two numbers uh, whose sum of squares is equal to 450. I don't know if they exist, but let's say three-digit, four-digit numbers, then it will be really hard to go through all the cases. So let's go ahead and factor this. A plus C and A minus C equals 5. As you know, 5 is a prime number and we can only factor it in certain ways. So this can be 5 and 1, or 1 and 5, or negative 5 and negative 1, or negative 1 and negative 5. Those are the all, all the cases that you can factor these two factors. Okay? Now, where do we go from here? Each of these is going to give us a system. So if you think about it, let's just pick one and then we can apply it to the other ones. A plus C equals 5 and A minus C equals 1. Now when you add these two equations and divide by 2, you're going to get the value of A. So A is 5 plus 1 divided by 2. And guess what? If you subtract, then you get 2C equals 4 and half of that will give you the C value. So if you go ahead and take those two values and add them up and divide by 2, that gives you A. If you subtract and divide by 2, you get the C value. So from here we can easily find the AC values. The first one gave us a 3 comma 2. By the way, these are order pairs in the form of A comma C. B is not included yet. We're going to take a look at it next. With the 1 and 5, A value is not going to change, but B will be negated. I mean C, you know what I'm saying, right? Because of the negative difference. And in the third case, we're going to add them up and divide by 2. That's going to give us a negative 3. When we subtract this way, we're going to get a negative difference, right, obviously. And that's going to give us negative 2. And of course, the last case is going to be negative 3 with, with a positive 2. Make sense? So those are the only possible values. But where do we go from here? Well, we do know of A and C. These are all the possibilities, all the cases. We're also going to be taking a look at the results from Wolfram Alpha and compare with our findings. But if you look at these two equations, they both have B. That's how we got rid of it, right? So let's go ahead and take one of these equations. It doesn't matter which one. Second one is a little smaller, no big deal, but let's use that one. B squared plus C squared is equal to 40, right? Now, we do know C, remember, because we got the A, B, a and C values together, so this is A and this is C. So we can go ahead and plug it in in all the cases, but here's the thing. Think about it. C is either 2 or negative 2, so its square is always going to be positive 4, 
right? Because real numbers squared can never be negative. So because c is plus minus 2, c squared is always, always, always going to be positive 4. Therefore, we can just replace c squared with 4, which is nice. That only gives us a single value. But then from here, we get b squared equals 36, which gives us two b values, 2b or not 2b, right? All right, so b equals 6 or b equals negative 6. So this means that we can go ahead and put it all together. So for example, if a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 2, and in this case, b can be either 6 or negative 6, so that kind of gives us 3, 6, 2, and then 3, negative 6, 2. Make sense? So you're going to pick an a value and a c value, put the b in the middle, and b can be plus minus 6. It's always going to be the same. And you can kind of go through all these cases and find all possible answers. There aren't that many. And let me also tell you a variation on this problem. I just realized if you actually have an equation like this, a squared plus b squared equals 45, and c squared plus d squared equals 40, when we, where we have four variables, obviously there's nothing against uh, the you know, b and d being the same, they could be, but they don't have to be all the time. But if you think about it, this problem is actually kind of like a subset of the solution set. And if you plug it in or try to solve it yourself, you're going to get more solutions, obviously, because we have less restrictions. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha, and then we're going to finish up. But Think about this problem. Can we solve this problem in a different way? So what happens, for example, if you add these two equations, you're going to get a squared plus 2b squared. That's not very helpful. But another thing you could definitely use is modular arithmetic. Let's briefly talk about that. So for example, you can look at this equation in mod 2. Uh, for example, 45 is 1 mod 2. Can we get uh, the sum of the squares being mod 1? in um, being one in mod two, look at uh, all possibilities. Of course, if you go to higher mods, uh, it's gonna be a little easier. For example, you can try mod four because 45 is gonna give you one again, but 40 is gonna give you zero, or you can try mod three, mod five. Prime numbers are a little better most of the time. But anyways, that's just an alternative uh, for solving these kinds of equations if you wanna individually look at them. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the results from Wolfram Alpha and we'll, co we'll compare our results. And as you see here, the integer solutions are a equals plus minus 3, b equals plus minus 6, and c equals plus minus 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.